Well, welcome to another edition of Chopping It Up with the Chief, the Chief being Michigan State University's Vice President for Public Safety and Chief of Police, Marlon Lynch. Chief, great to have you back again. My pleasure, Russ. Uh, Thanks for having us again. I trust the summer was good and you're all geared up for another fall and beyond. (laughs) Yeah, we're all re-energized and we've welcomed our our students, faculty, and staff back with the successful move-in and we're at it. That's right. And as the chief continues to reorganize the department, as you say, your goal always just to serve the Spartan community as best you can. Today, we're going to focus on the Police Services Bureau. And we have with us today Captain Sharif Fadley. He leads the patrol division inside the Police Services Bureau. And Dan Munford is here. And Dan, you are, tell me your title. I oversee the Community Engagement Unit. Okay. Okay. And why don't you each take a minute, Dan, while I'm on you, just talk a little bit about your role and what you do for the police department. Sure. So thanks for having us here. This is is great to be here. Uh, The Community Engagement Unit is a team comprised of four sergeants and myself. Um, We're spread out throughout the different neighborhoods on campus, um, and our goal is just to uh, reach out and be a... Uh, contact and a liaison for our students, faculty, and staff within the residential neighborhoods. So, yeah. And what would you say are some of the common duties that you would carry out in the neighborhoods? Yeah, we attend a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of programming and presentations, active violence presentations, um, alcohol-related events. Um, We sat in on a lot of the staffing um, interviews last year. And it's just a day-to-day walking through and talking to people. It's the best job ever because people are always like, are, do you ever work? And I'm like, yeah. And they say, what is your job? And I said, I go around and I talk to people. It's, it's pretty cool. It's fun. Well, like they say, when you, when you can make your avocation your vocation, you've, you've made it, right? So, And Captain Fadley, please describe your role a little bit more. Yeah, thank you, uh, Russ, for having us. Uh, yeah, so I'm entrusted uh, by the VP to run our patrol division, uh, our canine unit, as well as our IRSRT, which is our tactical team. Uh, our personnel that are assigned to that. Uh, our patrol division is a fully functional we're a, a police service. Uh, we're vested with the authority as police officers sworn in the state of Michigan. We also have, uh, under the VP's um, approval and swearing in under the uh, Sheriff of Ingham County, uh, deputization in Ingham County because we have property all over Ingham County, and sometimes we're called for mutual aid assists. And we have a 24-7, 365 day operation. Uh, we provide uh, police services to the community, ranging from anything from bike larcenies, we respond to domestics, uh, narcotics calls, drug calls, um, active shooter, if there's that type of call, we respond to essentially from mild to wild, Russ. Uh, we have, uh, we have, as myself, the captain of patrol, we have two lieutenants, one on days, one on nights. We have seven sergeants, three on days, four on nights, and then we have 19 patrol officers, nine on days, and 10 on nights. So. In that 24-7, 365 operation, we run two shifts, 12-hour shifts. We also have a jump shift. So there's always uh, police commands, uh, supervisors, as well as patrols officers that are available and ready to respond for calls for service. And, Chief, why did you reorganize in this particular way? Well, this particular way is, you know, as we've stated uh, in in prior uh, shows and opportunities, is talking about evolving to the needs of the campus in itself. And uh, upon my arrival, uh, there had already been work done uh, specifically with the uh, various task force that have been put on in place uh, by President Stanley and the university and in, in taking look specifically at how we police and how we engage our community. And what was very prevalent was uh, how we engage our community itself. And so creating a community engagement unit, although uh, MSU police and public safety have always done a form of community policing, this in, in sort of the transition of having a specific unit who spend time, as as you heard uh, Captain Mumford talked about, engaging with the housing staff, with the student affairs staff on a regular basis, as, as often as possible. Um, you know, a good example of it is Dan's office is in the main library. So these offices have uh, existed, again, for years uh, within various buildings within the campus, but um, for us to get back to that philosophy of that continuous engagement, this allows that to happen. So it's trying to be proactive with the programming, the comfort level with our community and how they are become more comfortable with us and the roles that we play, specifically from a community engagement piece. And that will continue to evolve. In regards to uh, the patrol functions and, and canine with that, 
is uh, part of what we've done in regards to the allocation of staff is we also took a look at what types of calls are most common for us. And so as we have our numbers of officers on patrol, as we talk to Deputy Chief Andrea Munford and community support, we have started also to invest in regards to how we support in regards to uh, mental health issues our sexual assault investigations and things of that nature. So trying to balance the numbers across the department based on the needs of our community and what we're seeing. And how would you distinguish between community service and community support? Sure. The support, community support would be those um, in our response to uh, a mental health crisis from a, we can receive directly those. And these are uh, investigators that have received uh, specialized training for that. The same for our special victims unit, for those that are victims of relationship violence and sexual misconduct. And they partner regularly with other units within the campus community, whether it's with the uh, counseling and uh, mental health services or housing and um, our partners within student affairs for that's the support aspect of it and they can get the additional resources that they may need over time with that and stay in touch. The services component is the when you call 911 or you call <laughs> a non-emergency non-emergency number, those are primarily uniformed uh police officers that will come and respond to your need at that time, provide the assistance that's necessary and go from there or then even as a specialized unit such as our K9 unit that's widely used in support of our events. Um, and, and maybe even in some uh, criminal uh, offenses and needs to where that training comes into play at that particular time. So the support is an ongoing component. The services is more of the response and what's needed at that time. Got you. And Captain Fadley, I imagine the K-9 unit is quite popular when you're out and about with the dogs. <laughs> yes, yeah, very, very popular. I actually have to give kudos to Captain Mumford. He's also a former handler, too, so he could speak on that. Um, yeah, I'm very, very proud of our canine unit. We have uh, seven handlers and nine dogs. You may say, well, where were the other two dogs, right? So two handlers have two dogs each, uh, and then the rest. We have four uh, dual-purpose uh, dogs. They're the German Shepherds, and essentially five labs that are single-purpose. What I mean by dual-purpose is the normal function you would see, let's say if you're watching a movie and you see what a canine would do, a police canine would do, uh, building searches, area searches, article searches, um, handler protection, but they're also tasked with explosive detection as well. Do you guys train the dogs, or do they come partially trained, or how does that work? That's a great question, Russ. So th one of the things that I'm, uh, one of the many things I should say that I'm very proud of our canine unit is uh, the level of experience uh, and certifications as trainers. Uh, so as a police department, we've invested in our personnel to get to a certain level. So out of the out of the seven handlers, three of them are trainers. One is a trainer and two are master trainers. The best way I could describe that to you, Russ, is kind of like master's degree and PhDs in canine, right? So they understand the psyche of the dog. They know how to put the work into the dog, and they can certify our dogs in-house, right? We can give special attention and, and, and work on things that the dog may need, but at the same time, through the approval of VP Lynch, we can essentially have other units, or sorry, other agencies that want to get their dogs certified can actually come to this higher institution of learning called Michigan State University and get their dogs certified. Right? And what else would you like us to know about the patrol division? Maybe some challenges or opportunities or misunderstandings you would want to clear up? Yeah, I so I would tell you um, I'm, another, uh, under, under my responsibility and what I'm tasked with, it's another group that I'm extremely, extremely proud of because they're, they're highly educated and they're very well trained. I believe an MSU police officer can go anywhere in police. I don't believe anyone can come to MSU in police, right? Um, and remember I used the term mild to wild and I, I believe that in the sense of the type of calls we respond to. And to give you an example, we had, this is real, so we had a call where we had uh, 40 cattle from beef cattle escape the pen on Bennett and Hagedorn. So imagine patrol gets called out there because, you know, this was like 2 or 3 in the morning. They're worried about vehicles striking uh, the cattle in the roadway and causing injury, et cetera. Um, so our officers had to wrangle, wrangle these 40 cattle and get them back in the pen. 
Yeah, you can only imagine what the in smell the dark. Of, in the dark, and you can only imagine what the smell of the patrol cars well, were like. Too, what, right? They might have stepped right, in right, where they got in. <laughs> um, but going from that the next day to responding to an active shooter in the city, where someone got shot and our officers essentially apprehended the shooter without incident. So that's what I mean by the level of service that comes from Michigan State University Police and Public Safety Patrol Division. To me, is second to none. Um, you'll see in the way they interact, uh, um, not only with our community, but with the guests that come to Michigan State University to enjoy uh, the events, the sporting events, and, and so forth. So I'm very, very proud of them. They do it all. They do it all. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine the, say, a Detroit or Chicago policeman doesn't rattle cattle, wrangle cattle very often. It's probably not in their <laughs> lane, Russ, you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> and, Dan, I, do you wear your uniform in the library then, or what sort of your – Dated, what do you do on a daily basis then? It depends on the day. Okay. Some days I, I, you might see me in a uniform. Other days you might see me in polos and uh, a polo shirt and khakis. Um, my day-to-day -day operations are I, I do a lot of meetings, um, walk around, check on our library staff, just engage with them, check with the administration building, Olds Hall. We've got a lot of our community partners right in that same area. Um, it's just just a matter of checking in with them. What can we do for you? How are things going? If we have a call for service, I might do some follow-up. Just go see, you know, if there's anything additional that they need. Um, and that's my day-to-day -day about setting up programming and presentations with our uh, housing staff. Just a, a whole lot of check-ins. I'm, I'm on the computer a lot more than I want to be. But when I get that opportunity to uh, get out in the field and go visit our, our community partners, that, that's the most beneficial part of my day. And I'm going to circle back on the canine part real quick. We've actually got two officers that are going through a comfort canine school. So we're going to be adding two more dogs to our, um, our realm next week. They'll be graduating hopefully on Friday, fingers crossed. Um, but they're down in Florida right now getting their dogs. They're going to be what some people might call a therapy dog, but we're going to have them available for... Um, the community support division has one dog and the community engagement has another. So many times when, when we have requests for programming and presentations, they always ask for a dog. And we don't always have a dog available, but that's, that's about to change. So we're looking forward to what this looks like when, when they get back next week. Really, everything seems to come from a proactive, let's try to avoid problems, right? Let's be in the community and not, as you said before, the only time you interact with us is when you need to call for help. Yeah, that's correct, Russ. And I think you've heard from, from both captains and, and how uh, the operations are set to do that. You know, from uh, a patrol perspective, it's what call comes across, right? It's we respond to every call that comes into us with that. There's going to be a response to find out exactly what's needed. Um, the same thing from the specialized unit like K-9 is being proactive from an event perspective to working maybe in search some of our research facilities, but then in helping to, tra to train um, our partners that are here in Michigan um, as well. And then the community engagement component, that is something that will, the evolution has not stopped with that because everything from housing to um, new orientation for faculty and staff, not just students with that. And so uh, I, I think you've heard, a, I would say, a, a modest response from both. The time that goes into it um, is pretty significant. And, you know, the planning needs to be there um, as well. So uh, although the, you know, we would love to have a lot more to do more, um, we're just not in that sense. And I think everyone understands that we're all, if you work, you may not have the exact numbers and resources that you want, but I think that the university has been uh, very supportive of our efforts and how we provide police and public safety services. And so with us, we have to manage those resources um, and be able to make sure that they are spread across the various needs and ready when needed. Yeah. So Captain Fadley, what else would you like us to know or some key takeaways about your patrol division? Yeah, so um, it's not only uh, what you would assume in like a uniform division, let's say, for example, for training. When we work 12-hour shifts, there's a lot of room uh, to essentially get better and sharpening our and bettering our craft. So not only do we do the, you know, the firearms training um, and let's say the use of force training and we get the legal updates and stuff like that, but many may not know that we spend quite a bit of time on RVSM training and DEI. Uh, we also, our tasks, just because we're in the uniform division doesn't mean that we don't engage, just like our partners, uh, Captain Mumford's team, in engaging the community. We also take that very, very seriously uh, from a patrol standpoint and canine. 
we've deployed our canine over 400 events in a year, between 400 and 500. Pre-COVID, 500, like we're in the 400. That's a lot of events for the canine unit. I just told you it's seven handlers and nine dogs, right? Um, and so those events can range from Girl Scout troop coming in to one of our largest intergenerational um, gatherings. They call it uh, the Grandparent University, and it's during the summer. And uh, during that event, you may have 150 to 200 people in attendance, and they get to learn about the dogs. They get to see them in their different disciplines. And they actually get to, besides the interaction, they get to watch and actually participate in an actual track and see what the dogs do to identify and move towards source and identifying where somebody might be hiding, if you will. So these kind of things we're tasked with. The VP doesn't just say, well, just this, because this engagement unit can do the engagement piece and patrol just as that uniform that responds. If for your listeners, then, you know, what's important to understand is all of our all of our personnel in Michigan State University Police Public Safety are tasked with engaging in our community. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not your average police department. We do it all. That's, that's yeah, so great to hear. And Captain Munford, what some key takeaways that, about your what you oversee? Yeah, um, I, just listening to Captain Fadley, just what he was saying. Um, you know, the biggest piece for us is we're out there as a resource. We've got so many pieces in place at our department, um, as Sharif was saying, in regards to just our response, what we might deal with on a day. We've allocated so many special response areas within our department, and we're embedded in so many different areas with our counseling, with um, orientation. We're everywhere, but the biggest thing is that we're a resource. We wouldn't be here without the students. That that's for sure. So we understand that all of our student or all of our department members all have four year degrees. So we've been through what the students have been through. We get it. So like again, like Sharif had said, you know, many departments can't be university officers, but we can do the police aspect of it. We've got a little bit higher, I'll say tolerance level for some things. Um, our response is a little bit different, a lot more empathic. But, you know, just the the biggest piece of it is just knowing that we're here. We're here 24-7. We are highly trained. Don't be afraid to talk to us. We we love talking to people, especially in my role. If, if you ever see me out, that's what we do. You know, we're dedicated to this university. We're dedicated to this job, to the students, faculty, staff, and the safety. It's a great place to work. It really shows. Uh, yeah. Chief, your final thoughts on what we've been talking about today? Well, I mean, these are the day-to-day -day operations, yeah. right? We've had discussions that have been pretty broad, um, and so now we're starting to get to those that are responsible for the operations of yes. it all. Um, the the addition of the comfort canines is just a, something else that we yes. see that our community values and needs. And so having um, uh, canines that are you know, seeking that attention and want to help to soothe and uh, help with stress for those of our community. That's part of it um, as well. Uh, and I would also just say that we are um, starting a Citizens Police Academy and it will go through the semester. We have uh, 20 uh, participants with that and some of what was discussed here in addition to the other areas of the department will be um, shared with those that are going through the academy. Our, our goal, uh, this will be the first one in a while. I believe it was something that had been done maybe in years past, um, but it's being reinvigorated. There's a lot of interest uh, from our community members for it, and it's an, an opportunity to be transparent to how the department operates and why things are done in a certain manner for that. So we're looking forward to that. And you know, it's the beginning of fall semester, so there, there are lots of things going on, everything from the move in to uh, the beginning of football season. And, and everything in between. Just give people a sense of the, the manpower and what a football Saturday is like for you and your team. Yeah, it's uh, just not coming to the game and, and enjoying the, the activity itself. Um, it's an all-day event. Uh, our, our officers, security staff, volunteers, uh, other members are very supportive in the efforts that go into supporting a home football game. Um, it is a long day with that, but it is – as you know, it's, you know, the stadium is just not those in the stadium. It's everything that goes with it from the traffic flow pre and post game. Not everyone actually goes in the stadium also during the game as well. So we have well over 200 police present, then additional ushers and some in security forms. And it's a collaborative effort. 
uh, between our local partners of East Lansing Police Department, Ingham County Sheriff's Office, Meridian Township Police, and uh, Michigan State Police as well with those efforts and then also some of our federal partners so we have a lot of representation and support that goes into it that's part of what you do being on a college and university campus you know and a, you know division one athletics is part of it and it means a lot to the surrounding community as well i think for the listeners just to remember what uh, captain mumford said is just you know we're we're very approachable you know come meet and know your uh, msu police and public safety officers it's we're that resource we're there for them um, and there's no call that we just we, we don't pick and choose our calls when the call comes in we answer them so uh, for the for the community to be comfortable knowing that uh, it's a partnership right so we're here to serve and I know the VP uh, expects second to none type of response so uh, and everybody's behind that so when you see that you'll see it in the interactions between our department and the community members I'm very pleased with that so I think Russ would benefit from a ride along as well. Oh, that'd be great. Let's yeah. set you up, Russ. We could do the interview in the car. In no, the that car. would really be cool. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. We can get you a ride along and uh no, that would be great. First hand experience. I would it. love that, yeah. yeah. So well uh, police.msu.edu is a simple place to go to learn a lot more about everything we've been talking about. And this has been another episode of Chopping It Up with the Chief. The chief being MSU's vice president for public safety and chief of police, also an MSU alumnus, Marlon Lynch. Thank you again, chief. And we've uh, enjoyed meeting Captain Fadley and Captain Munford today, and thank you both for coming in today. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Russ. Go green. Go white. Go white.